Welcome back class to week number two of learning Randomate 2 for free right here on this channel. I hope that you really enjoyed playing around with the dead mouse stage and you're going like, wait, dead mouse stage, what did I miss? Then either you didn't join the Facebook group or you didn't see the video from last week. So make sure to stop this video right now, go back to last week. It's really important that you follow these episodes step by step, even though it might seem a little slow at times because it's important to get the basics right. This console has a really, really steep learning curve and last week was nothing but fun. I only showed you how you download and install a professional lighting software and a professional visualizer completely for free. And I also showed you how you can set up pre-visualization with a demo show that actually contains a 2011 Dead Mouse stage, which I replicated a few years ago. And so um, this whole setup will be the basis for you to go further down in the video. So if you haven't set that up, it's really important for you to go back. For everyone else who did that already, thanks for coming back. Um, here's week number two. And today I want to show you how this software version kind of relates to the real world because I think it's really important and that's something I didn't understand at the beginning of how and what I'm seeing on the screen on my computer actually relates to the big console that is used at concerts every single day. So here we have this beautiful console. Um, this is the flagship model, the Grand MA2 full size that MA lighting manufactures and if you actually start looking out for these at the front of house, so the area where the technicians are, at a concert, you will actually see these more and more. It's kind of funny how that filter changes. So this is the flagship model, and you can see it has five, uh, three screens, and then one small touch screen, but that's present in all models. And you can also see over here that it actually has 15 executors. That's what these are called, and those are the playback faders or playback units rather, for your visual content. And so if we actually put our on-PC version right next to it, um, you might be able to spot what part of the console this window right here represents. So we can see here these four round buttons. These are actually these encoders over here. And we will see in two episodes down the line how you can use these to manipulate um, your fixtures that you have, so like the color, you can set the brightness, you can set the position. All these different parameters are manipulated through these encoder wheels and like that you will end up creating the looks for your show. This down here is the touch screen um, and then over here we have the command section. So this part of the console right here, that's all visible over here. Now Let's maybe talk about these executors. Um, these are actually present, and I mean, you might have spotted it already. Uh, if you click on these over here, then you can see that you have two different pages. So it also says 1 through 15, 16 through 30. Um, the number down here actually um, represents these buttons down here, uh, because mind you, it's not very obvious. These over here, are like separate playback units and this one down here as well. It's kind of weird, but you have a fader up here and then three buttons. Down here, you just have that one button. So these are button executors and these are executors with a fader. So that's what these two numbers are for. And with everything, when it comes to these buttons over here, when they're yellow, they're visible. And if you click on it just again, it will disappear. All right, let's talk about the screens though. What you can also see over here in the picture, again, are the three big touch screens. And these are represented um, with screen two, three, and four. And it's kind of odd, sort of unintuitive because we're in a you know, left to right society, most of us at least. And uh, this is actually screen two, three, and four. I know, kind of weird, but that's just the way it is. So this stuff down here, this still belongs to these four encoders, right? So that's like space for, for various sort of information. Uh, and you will absolutely also have this directly on the hardware version of the console. You can see over here, this still looks a lot different to, to this area. And that's because 
That's the custom area for your windows and toolbars, and we'll get to that in a minute. And then, I mean, the rest of the screens, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Only what you can see over here, um, these are the executor slots, actually, that we already saw up here and down here. So these will actually, on a real console, uh, display the content that's inside of these physical faders, or, you know, rather physical executors. So that's screen three and four that are mostly identical to each other. Um, and then you have two external screens over here. These are a lot bigger because they actually support different resolutions. Uh, so that's why actually these screens are also fairly small. That sort of tripped me off in the beginning. But so that's sort of the connection between on PC and then the real console. Again, on PC uh, is modeled after this full-size console. And what's really cool is that whenever you prepare a show in this context and you kind of keep in mind what that would look like on the real console, then you can perfectly create a show in the software version and then when you get to the console, you can feel right at home uh, right from the start. It's actually a pretty amazing feeling. All right, let's create our first window or rather let's try to call it a bit differently. Let's create our first arrangement of toolbars, shall we? So over here, we can just click on an empty slot wherever we want to insert a new window. And you can see different tabs right over here. This is again, another feature of MA2 that's really confusing. But for now, let's just take a look at all of the fixtures that we have. And that's perfect. Um, grouped under sheets because sheets is sort of a list of objects. So a list of fixtures, a list of DMX output right here. And by the way, whenever you have a window, you just click on the yellow button and click on delete window to make it go away. So again, click up here and then click on fixtures. And here we can see all of the fixtures that we have in our setup. Pretty amazing, huh? Now, what you maybe saw in the picture of the console is like many different small things in that one window. And for that, you can achieve that. Just simply drag this small corner up and down. Like some windows will actually tell you that you can't reduce them below a certain threshold. Um, but I mean, you'll, you'll figure that out once you, once you try to make them smaller than, than they actually want to be. So let's create a second sort of toolbar. Um, let's see. Let's go over to pools. And pools is always a collection of objects. So here you can actually see it's a collection of effects or a collection of groups. Um, you can also have a collection of sequences. And everything that you see down here is always sort of a collection of user created content. So if we go over to effects, you can see that, um, interestingly enough, this is actually the effect that we have on this fader, and this is the effect that we have on this fader. Now, you might be wondering, why are there faders in here? I thought that we have them up here and up here, and that's true, but that actually brings me to the next tab. Let's just delete that again, or rather make it smaller. If we go to the playbacks tab, you can actually insert just the buttons of your playbacks, delete window, or you can, for example, insert these faders together um, with the buttons. So this is the full version of what you also see over here. And what's also great is that this completely relates to the executor section. So these are just executors, um, you know, in a, in a small window that you can arrange however you like. If you click on the yellow ball, you can see that you can actually select um, which executors to show. And so whenever you click on that yellow ball, you can not only delete that window, but also change the options. So now that we have a nice arrangement, let's bring on the command overlay. That's something you also didn't know of before. If we click on that though, just compare that to this section over here. It's pretty much identical and it's just a way for Grandma2 on PC users to kind of access 
this command panel a lot faster because this is actually at the heart of everything that you're doing inside of this console. So what you want to do is actually hit the store button. That's the command for um, taking something and <laughs> storing it inside of an object. That didn't really make sense much. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, so in this case, just click store. You can see by the yellow text that, that you actually have it selected. And you can also see up here in this command line that you entered the command. And now just tap on this button up here. Give it a name. Let's say, for example, I don't know, fixtures, whatever. And now you have your first window up here. Is that cool? So now whenever you click on this, then this arrangement will reappear. And that's really cool because you can actually go ahead and delete that, delete that. Now if I click on this view button right here, that's what it's called, my whole arrangement is back. If I want a slightly different arrangement, let's say I want to remove the faders, but instead put in my list of sequences, let's go to pools, and then sequence. Then I can go ahead and store that in a second view. So just move that over here a little bit, just like you need it. Go to store, hit the empty uh, slot right here and just rename that to, um, I don't know, sequences. And the reason why I'm using all caps letters is just because I think it looks cool, but you can, you can just label this however you like, you will actually eventually find your own system. All right, so now when I click on this, on these two view buttons, you can see that they actually change. And what's also really cool is if we scroll down here, and let's just say scroll down to our LED bars. Now I can also show you how you can update a screen. Let's just move this one out a little bit. Let's just make this really big. So now we changed sort of, you know, the, the arrangement of that table. And what's interesting is if you now go ahead and store, that's also how you update. Click store, click on the sequence button again, and then just hit please. And now when I switch between the two, you can see that even the arrangement of these tables will remain intact. And also what's what's really interesting is that the position actually of where you scrolled in this table too also remains the same. So whenever I scroll down and I want to go back to my LED bars, I just have to press right here. So that's how these views are really, really flexible. Last but not least, let me show you another tab. So we have sheets, which is a list of things that, that you might want to look up that you didn't really create though necessarily, like fixtures, channels, a sort of, you know, dimmer channels. Um, these are, are sort of just system generated lists for you. Pools are objects that most of the time you actually completely create on your own. There's mostly some, some default objects, but other than that, these are um, your areas of, of really being able to customize this console. Presets are actually a setting um, for fixtures. So if you have a fixture selection and let's say you select them to be the color red, then you can actually store that, that look, if you will, in a preset. Um, but it's not really a look, that's what you use sequences for. More on that later, but presets generally are just storing a certain setting of fixtures um, somewhere so you can quickly recall it. So playbacks are pretty much just executors, but also two windows that give you information about what's actually currently playing back. Other is, um, you know, just different windows that, that will be helpful. So here, for example, is the encoder bar from this section over here that you can also just bring into your view so you can already see this is a very flexible system. And then system is just stuff that you won't be using for a long, long time. So let's go back to other and let's add a clock. And here you can see a nice digital clock. Now when we press the yellow button, um, again, you can actually change the options in here. 
So you can, for example, click on this one over here, go to analog, and now we have a nice little clock. Again, remove all of these windows if you like, if you want to make this full screen. Um, take it by the by the blue um, you know top bar, just like just like a window on on any like operating system. Now go to store and hit an empty slot. You can call this clock. And just like that, you already created your first custom windows. And that's it for today. Really not that much to learn, but I wanted you to make the connection A between what you see on the screen and the, the real world console that you hopefully might be using someday for your own shows. Um, and then secondly, I wanted to explain to you this concept of like different toolbars that you can arrange, which actually will be really important for us in the future. And as you saw, it's a really, really, really flexible system. So what I want you to do in the following week is just play around with it a little bit, create views. Um, also, if you go to the command overlay, you can already um, check out these three commands over here. So you can just go ahead and delete something or for example, move a view. So with these, um, tools you can already mess around a little bit with these views with this concept of creating your own toolbars and you probably won't be able to understand that much about it just yet but that's fine just go out there and explore so thanks for watching you guys if you learned something in this video give it a thumbs up and make sure to get subscribed uh, to get help when you're stuck join the facebook group and don't be shy to share your progress in there as well um, other than that, new episodes every Wednesday, so hit that bell icon to never miss an upload. And with that being said, see you next week.